Welcome back for another fun video. This one is quick and easy and perfect for the holidays. Um, this is a gift card holder stocking that is also an ornament. So it's a gift in itself. You can hang it on your tree or your mantle or wherever else. This is such a fun mini stocking. I also have a full size stocking pattern available. I kind of went crazy here. You'll see that um, in some of my photos, I made so many different colors of these because they work up so quickly. So I hope you enjoy this pattern as much as I have. For a supplies day, I will be using the Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. The main color um, in most of my images is this white. On camera, I'm going to be using this Ford Heather, just so you can see it a little bit better. Better, We're going to make one in this color. Wool of the Andes has so many amazing colors. As you can see, they even have some tweed. Um, they're on We Crochet. I have the affiliate link below for those. And this is just a great yarn to use for this. It looks amazing for the holidays. I will also be using this Fable Fur, as you can see, for the top. If you prefer to keep the top in the same yarn and do a ribbing top, uh, I have options for that in the written pattern. Then you will also need a pair of scissors, some uh, tapestry needle, a stitch marker, and then as well, if you want to do this leather detail, I um, cut leather strips just out of um, scraps of leather that I found at the craft store and punch some holes in them. And then you can use these crafting um, double cap rivets to attach that to there. And I will show you how to do that as well. The hook I'm using today is a furl streamline. This is the size H. There's lots of amazing hooks out there. So pick your favorite hook and let's get started. To get started with this stocking, we're going to be working it from the bottom to the top. I work the heel in rows, but it is really simple. We're not gonna fasten off. We're just gonna simply work it in rows and then keep on going. So it's worked really quickly. So we're gonna start with that bottom, work towards the top, do that for accent, and this should be pretty quick. So for our very first round, I like to start with the magic circle and then single crochet eight stitches in the magic circle. If you've never done this before, you can visit my blog for more detail on how to do the magic circle. Or if you prefer, you can chain two and single crochet eight into the second chain from the hook. Now I'm going to mostly pull that hole closed, but I'm going to leave a bit of a space just because it's easier for your next round if you don't. And then we'll pull it closed after the round two. I have my stitch marker handy because we are working continuously, which means we are not joining at the end of each round. And we're going to go right into our first stitch of this round and we are going to do two single crochets. So we start with eight stitches and here's the first stitch of round one. I'm doing two single crochets into that very first stitch and marking the first stitch of the round. In the very next stitch, I will simply single crochet one. In the next, I will do two single crochets and then in the next single crochet one. So our repeat around is simply doing two single crochets in the same stitch and then one in the next. This will increase from eight stitches to 12 stitches. And now at the end of round two, I can go ahead and pull that magic ring tight. Now for round three, I'm going to move my stitch marker and we are going to do two single crochets into the first stitch and mark the first stitch of the round. And now we are going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into each of the next two. And repeat that all the way around. This will increase from 12 stitches to 16 stitches. Now for the next round, this will be the last round that we increase on. We are going to single crochet two stitches, mark that first stitch of this round. and then single crochet into each of the next three. And we will repeat that all the way around and we will have a total of 20 stitches. And we are done increasing, but for round five, we are simply going to single crochet into each stitch around. So be sure to mark the first stitch of the round so you can keep track of where you are. And then simply single crochet in each stitch around. We're not changing the stitch count. It is still 20 stitches. 
So now we're ready to start working the foot of this little cute little stocking. We're done with the toe. And at this point, it's a great idea to go ahead and weave in your beginning end because it's hard to get to later. So we will continue to work in continuous rounds. We're not going to be joining, so we'll want that stitch marker, but we're going to work on changing our stitch pattern. And this will be the established stitch pattern for the body of this stocking. To get started, we're going to look at the very first stitch in our round and looking especially at that V on the front. We're going to be doing a split single crochet, also known as a waistcoat stitch. The difference between this and a single crochet is how we enter the stitch and how much space we give that stitch. So let's do this together. We see the V on the front and we're going to enter our hook right in the center of that V. And on the back, we come out between an upside down V. If you don't come out between an upside down V, go ahead and back out and then try again being conscious about coming out on the back side to the upside down V. This will get easier on the next round because I'm going to show you some tricks on this round. When I pull up a loop, I want to pull up that loop to give it more space than I would a regular single crochet. The reason why is we are entering the stitch lower and we need more height so that it's easy to get into on the next round. Then we can yarn over and finish that stitch and then mark this first stitch of the round. The next stitch will be worked as a single crochet into the back loop only. So we're not entering through both loops. We're only going to put our hook through the back loop and then do a single crochet stitch. And that's our repeat around. We do a split single crochet, pulling up that loop, and then a single crochet into the back loop only. We're going to repeat that all the way around. And when you work the split single crochets, they should work just as easy as a single crochet stitch does. So if you're finding you're having a hard time with that stitch, it's often a tension issue or the number one culprit is this loop here. You need to pull it up before finishing that stitch. That gives it enough space on the front for you to easily enter into it the next round. So just complete this round in our established stitch pattern and then come on back for round two of the foot. Now for round two through six, we are simply repeating round one. And when we work our next rounds, we will work in the same stitch pattern, but just so you can notice, you will always be working the same as the stitch on the round below. So if the round below is a single crochet in the back loop only, that's what we're gonna work this stitch. And then this one is a split single crochet, so we're gonna work that as a split single crochet. So you're just rotating between those two stitches all the way around and are going to do that until we have six total rounds on the foot. Now that I've done six rounds for the foot, it's time for us to work on the heel. We're not gonna worry about the beginning of the round for a little while, so we can take out our stitch marker and simply set it aside. We will be working our next steps in rows. So we're going to start by single crocheting into the next six, into the next eight stitches. Now we do not have to worry about working in the stitch pattern for this. I'm doing single crochet stitches so that it matches the toe. So I'm going to single crochet eight. Single crochet eight. After single crocheting eight, I'm going to turn my work I don't need to chain one. I can start right into that first stitch and I'm going to single crochet eight again, right back across these stitches. And now I'm going to turn my work again and we are going to skip this first stitch. We're not going to chain one. We're just going to skip this first stitch and single crochet into the next seven. So we've decreased by one stitch. And now we're going to turn again. We're going to skip the first stitch and go right into the second with a single crochet and in the remaining across. So this row we're just single crocheting six stitches.
Now we're going to turn again and we're going to skip the first stitch and we are going to single crochet five. Now we're all done building up that heel and we're ready to start working in the round again. So here's how we're gonna set that up. So we see we have a nice heel here and we need to start working around this again and getting back to the stitch count of 20. So we're going to do 20 stitches across here and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to work one stitch along the edges of this heel. In order to work one stitch, we're going to be doing a single crochet three together along this edge. So I'm going to insert my hook and pull up a loop, insert my hook about halfway and pull up a loop, insert my hook into the bottom corner of that, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. And now we've decreased along that edge to one stitch. Now our very next stitch is in our stitch pattern. And this is where we're going to start working in our stitch pattern again. So we're gonna do a split single crochet, single crochet into the back loop only. And we're going to keep doing that until we get to the other edge of the heel. Now we're at the other edge of our heel here and I'm going to need to place two stitches along the side of this. For my first one, I'm going to single crochet two together along this edge so that I don't have as many gaps. And then I'm simply going to single crochet one. We are back to our stitch count of 20. The next thing we'll need to do is work the next round in the established stitch pattern. Let's talk about how to do that. We're going to be moving our stitch marker up to be the first stitch of the round into our next stitch. And as we look across this stitch over here, we for sure know is a split single crochet. So we're gonna kind of count backwards. So if this is a split single crochet, then this would be a single crochet in the back loop only, split single crochet, back loop only, split, back, split single crochet. You'll always start this first stitch as a single crochet, but if you want to count a split single crochet, but if you want to count it backwards just to make sure you're on track, you can do so. So I'm going to start my first stitch of my round in a split single crochet, and now we can mark it again. So we've moved the beginning of our round stitch marker a bit, but it works out just fine. Now I'm going to single crochet into the back loop, split single crochet into the next. keeping in that stitch pattern repeat. I'm going to keep working these 20 stitches around. And now we're ready to just keep continuing in that stitch pattern repeat. We're going to be doing a total of eight rounds and then we'll come on back for the cuff. So now that I've done the repeats for this leg of the stocking, it's time for us to do the top cuff. I haven't finished my last stitch because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fur yarn and I'm going to pull it through my last stitch. Now, because this fur yarn is considerably more thick and we also do wanna keep it quite loose, we don't wanna do this part tightly, but we're going to do a half double crochet into the next stitch. Then we are going to skip a stitch and half double crochet into the next. We're not going to be working every stitch around. We're only going to be doing half of them. So we're only doing 10 stitches around here with the fur, but I want to keep that fur nice and loose to give it some space to be fluffy, not tighten it down so that it's not fluffy. So I'm skipping a stitch and half double crocheting all the way around. Now that I've gone all the way around, I can go ahead and fasten off. 
and I can fasten off both yarns and then weave in my ends. So now that we've finished the top of this, you really could leave the stocking as is if you want. The gift card fits nicely inside of here, but if you want to do the leather detail, all I did was cut out a strip of scrap leather. I used this punch to punch a hole in each end of that, and there's other punches you can use as well. This is just one I picked up at a craft store. And then if you have these double cap rivets, those work great for attaching it, otherwise you can use a piece of yarn. So for these double cap rivets, all I do is I take my first pointy rivet and I put it through that leather, and then I stick it through the side of the stocking, trying to move that fur yarn out of the way a bit until I can really see that rivet. Then I'm going to fold over the piece of leather, place it through the hole again, take the top of your rivet and snap it closed. And that way it does give it a way to hang on a tree as an ornament or display wherever you like. Now the other option for these is a tree on the front. I also went ahead and did, I was just playing around, I did a snowflake one. So it just really depends on what you want to embroider, what type of look you want. For this one, I think I'm going to do it just like this and we'll place a white tree on the front. So I've gone ahead and placed quite a bit of yarn onto a yarn needle and I'm going to start by weaving through the top of my work. This is kind of hard to flip in and out because it's such a small item. So we're going to try to work this a little bit of embroidery work um, all from the front of it. So I'm going to insert my, my needle into where I think is about center and I'm going to be making an upside down V. I'm going to pull this first yarn through, leaving this tail end for later. Then I'm simply going to keep making loops to create that upside down V that when we make a few of these, it creates the look of a Christmas tree. I do about three loops for the top here. You can really play around with this. It's really personal preference on what look you prefer. And then once I've made the top V, I just insert my hook down a little bit, go out a little bit farther on the next V, and I make another V. We're going to do the same thing for the last V. We're just going to go down and out a little bit farther than before, creating that upside down V. You don't want to pull too tight on these strands, otherwise they may pull the, the stocking body too tight. You don't want it to affect the drape of your fabric. Now once I've created the V's like I like, I'm going to weave my yarn needle up the back of my work and come out where we started. Now very carefully without pulling anything down here too tight, I'm simply going to create a knot with my starting and my finishing end. And then we're going to pull it to the back of our work. So we can go ahead and fasten off And then we can take our yarn needle and simply take that knot and push it through to the back of our work. And that way it is hidden and we've got this cute pattern on the front. Now the other thing I want to do is just a little tree trunk and I'm just doing an upside down triangle for this one. I'm just going to insert uh, my needle and start to create an upside down triangle. And I'm going to leave a tail just like I did up here. So I can do the same thing as I did before, 
making it really easy to work those ends for this. Now there's no right or wrong way for this part of it. It really comes down to personal preference. Now once I've got a cute little tree trunk the way I want it, I'm going to simply do the same thing I did before. And we're going to tie a knot. Fasten off and push that knot to the back. You can go ahead and push in any of those ends that are poking out until they're in the back and then you are done. It's a really, really quick and fun project. I wanted these because I wanted to have a really personalized teacher gift. I know that teachers love gift cards and that's usually what I tend to get and that's great, but I just don't feel like they're personalized enough. So when I give the teacher gifts with gift cards inside of these handmade stockings that can also be ornaments. I feel like I've put that personal touch on it that really lets someone know that you care. So these are great year after year and they're really fun and quick, easy to make. Thank you so much for joining me today. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button to come back for more fun projects and I hope you enjoy your holidays.